Hey everybody, welcome back to Model Trains 365. In this week's update, we are on the west bank of the Calumet River, working on scenery at the Simplify Sand and Gravel Company. So stay tuned to find out what progress has been made on the Heartland Division this week. If you watched my layout tour video, you might recall this area over here on the west bank of the Calumet River is going to be Simplify Sand and Gravel Company. So this week I decided to work on that. So in this case of Simplify Sands, the product is delivered via truck. So the driver pulls in, which I'll have a road right here. He gets out of his truck. He checks in with the office workers, gets back in. They tell him which pile to dump. He drives around, maneuvers himself and he backs into the pile and dumps the delivery. From there he exits and he's gone out of the picture. So he scoops up a load and he's gonna take it and put it through to the conveyors. Now either there's a conveyor for trucks that come back and they'll take their load from there or he's gonna go on the waterfront option, which I'm guessing a flip of a switch activates the long conveyor here and then it fills the barge with product and the barge can go away. So I'm really not planning for any kind of realistic modeling of receiving product via the barge as there's really not any room uh, to model that. But anyways, I've got the drag line there and maybe he's scooping out some rocks to reinforce the coastline or something like that. Uh, just leaving that option open, but definitely want it to be as prototypical as I can get. And uh, I think this will be a good little scene. Just remembering not everything has to be rail served. And in this case, this industry is not. So the plaster mounds underneath the white one here, I know I've got some styrofoam that I just poured some plaster over. And then the smaller one, I believe, is just solid plaster underneath. Maybe just a little piece of leftover styrofoam that I was using uh, for some other scenery. So that'll build up the sand piles. And for the sand, I'm actually going to use sand that I retrieved from the island of Iwo Jima. You can kind of see the dark colored sand and then there's some finer sand in that Ziploc bag. So I was stationed in Iwakuni, Japan and was able to take a trip to the island. And as an active duty Marine, this is just one way I can incorporate my lifestyle into my layout. And uh, that's why I named it Simplify Sand and Gravel. And it's the things like that that you put into your layout that make it unique and uh, also great conversation starters when people come and check out the layout. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is ballast the main line that goes behind this scene. I usually like to try to work uh, from the back to the front on a scene, but that's not always the case. Um, but in this instance, I've got some mainline ballast in the area, so just continuing that uh, won't be too difficult. I've got my overloaded scenery cart here, trying to keep things organized and in one spot, but there's never enough room. But we're going to grab the ballast that we're going to use and... Uh, get started. It's pretty convenient that they sell it in one pound bags and uh, checks out. Then when I get product in like ballast I'd love to just put it in these old Parmesan cheese containers and then break off the product label that comes on it and just clear tape that to it. For everything east of the Chicago yard I'm just using straight Kinzua. I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced. Uh, those are the SKU numbers that Arizona Rock and Mineral Company uses uh, for these products. But definitely recommend using these containers or something similar as you can tighten, tighten them up, seal them up, and uh, keep your stuff organized and it doesn't spill everywhere. So here before I ballast the track, I'm just going to fill in these gaps that are caused by the joints 
of the flex track so I just take some spare ties that I've saved along the way scrape off the tie plates and then slide them underneath where those rails are joined together in this case it's a little tight because I use some of the larger Peco rail joiners going around this curve uh, so I'm just going to scrape out a little bit of the cork roadbed so that the ties fit underneath the rail without pushing it up. And just like the scenery cart, I've got a cart that I also keep my air compressor on that I can roll around. It's especially handy when doing stuff like painting track where you're constantly moving around. You can just bring it with you. So for this small section, I'm just going to throw down some Vallejo burnt umber. I'm uh, just going to need a, about two drops into the airbrush. Now we've got the track painted and the excess paint wiped off the top of the rails. We're going to start ballasting. What I do is I'll take some Elmer's clear glue and just put it on the edge there where the roadbed meets the bench work. And that's just so when I pour down some ballast here, it's got a stopping point to stick to. Now I'm gonna take my mix and start applying the ballast along the main line here. So as you can see, I'm using a plastic spoon. This one I believe came from a Dairy Queen Blizzard. Bless its heart. So in this situation, I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to the front side of the track because that's the one that is closest to the eye. I want to make sure to apply enough so that the roadbed doesn't show through the ballast. And that's just giving the illusion that the only thing underneath this track is the ballast itself. Now that I have the ballast along the edges, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the center between the rails. Now this time, I like to apply it pretty lightly. I don't want too much of it sitting on top of the sleepers. So I'm just using a cheap craft brush and just lightly sweeping over the ties. Now that I've got the ballast pretty much where I want it, I'm just gonna spray it down with some alcohol. kind of saturate it. That way it doesn't clump up whenever I apply the glue. To the ballast. And I'm just using this piece of cardstock behind there so the alcohol doesn't get all over the backdrop. So once that alcohol is down there, I'm just going to use some Woodland Scenics cement and a medicine dropper, I guess you call it. And then I'm just going to really douse this So now while we wait for the ballast to dry, I'm going to work on these sand piles. Just taking some cheap acrylic craft paint. And going to add some water, make it more of a wash. and generously coat this mound to cover up the white plaster so none of it shows through once we apply the actual sand. Now I've got the gravel pile 
painted. I'm going to just put some clear glue, Elmer's glue, all over it. As we're going to lay the sand over top of that. I'm going to find a brush that's at the end of its life. Pretty solid bristles here from my water cup drying up in between projects. So, in good model railroad or fashion, never throw anything away because you can always find a use for something. So, in this case, dried up brush. It's actually loosening up with the Elmer's glue in the bristles, so that's good. It's got a great, nice coat of glue on here. So hopefully when I apply the sand, it's not going to run down. It's just going to stick where it's placed. So I opened up my Iwo Jima sand, and it is beautiful. really want to waste any of this at all so get close as I can here and just start to sprinkle it on and it looks like the Elmer's glue is holding it in place really well so that's great news there we go So just like the track ballast, I'm also going to lightly coat this with some alcohol and then throw some Woodland Scenics cement on top of it to help it all stick together. That should do the trick. Now moving on to the second pile, I'm going to coat it with glue as well, just like the first one. And this one I've just decided to do some gray ballast type gravel. Not near as exciting as the sand from Iwo Jima, but maybe in the future I'll be able to replace it with some sand from another famous location with some relevance to the Marine Corps. But until then, we're just going to go with this gray, UP gray ballast that I use for ballasting the mainline track west of Chicago. And we're going to throw the gravel on it. Once again, once we're satisfied with the coverage, we'll go ahead and coat it with some alcohol. And then go ahead and douse it with some Woodland Scenic Cement. Let's take a break from scenery and admire these new Atlas Norfolk Southern first responder boxcars that were recently released. I was able to pick up both road numbers and they look great paired up with the tank cars that I already have on my training first responders consist. So until I figure out what I'm going to do here in the very back of the scene, I'm just going to throw down some ground cover. So I'm going to start with a layer of earth from, from Arizona Rock and Mineral. Just going to throw down some Elmer's glue, just like I did for the sand piles. I'm going to brush that down to the ground, spread it out. Doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just give a base layer the dirt to stick to.
and as I think you can tell, I've already painted the bench work or the tabletop, whatever you want to call it, with a brown color to help hide anything that doesn't get fully covered up with the, with the dirt. Just going to throw some of this Woodland Scenics turf, kind of fill in that gap. So after I put down some more scenic glue, I just threw a little bit of different colored soil down to help give it a little variation. So I dug through some detail boxes and came up with a barrel and an extra pallet and a port john Keep that close. And on the other side, I've got a trash can and some ties that I put down. So nothing permanent. Now I'm going to fill in some of this ground cover here in between the sand piles and underneath the conveyor. Just using the Elmer's glue technique to build that base layer of glue. I've already got some ground covered down from previous attempts of scenery completion. Uh, so we're just going to work off that. It looks like this earth stuff matches it perfectly. So we'll just keep with that. Try not to get anything on our sand piles here. Keep that to a minimum. Once again, since I painted underneath, it doesn't have to be complete coverage. So that's always nice. And then like I did behind the tracks over there is I'll throw in some different material as well to change the color up a little bit. And I like to use some fine turf in there as well because those weeds like to grow everywhere. So don't be afraid to throw some of that in there with the dirt. Especially in the less traveled areas. And once that's done, we'll hit it with the alcohol. Using care so we don't blow the turf away. Make sure we get that saturated. and hit it with some scenic cement. And if you got a lot of glue on there, like it looks like I do at this time, you just go ahead and spread over a little more ground cover and it's gonna soak up that glue. So for this waterfront area here, I've just decided to Put some of these larger talus rocks towards the bottom and then just some earth at the top I guess. We'll see how that looks but hopefully it turns out nice. So it's got these talus rocks, pretty large rocks that I guess will help stop erosion if there's a flood. We're just gonna Pile them on there. Kinda maybe one third or half the way up. See how that turns out. So after looking at it, I've decided I'm just going to do the rocks all the way up to the top. Let that sit there for a while, see if I like it any better. So 
I really don't know how I'm going to secure these, but I think I'm just going to spray them with alcohol and then drop some scenic glue in there. I'm going to start at the top and just let it naturally filter on down through. Here's a quick look of everything we got done this week. I've placed the buildings back where they belong and the scene is really starting to come to life. Hopefully next week we'll be able to weather the buildings and keep this scene moving along. So make sure you stay tuned for more updates.